So today again, we're talking about forecasting the financial requirements. What is forecasting? What is financial requirement, capital sourcing and business operations? So these hands are, we look at from this angle that when you talk about forecasting, we are referring to predicting on how to get funds required for running of the business operations. It is the responsibility of this management and HOD finance as the champion. HOD is the champion of strategy to ensure that business operations funds from banks or investors are gotten. It's not easy to get these things. It's just you have to plan for it, and that is strategy. You want to sponsor something, you have to tell it. The management, which is the MD or the chief executive officer, head of finance, HR, sales and marketing, production, ICT, and other ones. All these are the management teams. They have to sit together to decide what business are we going, business operations we are going to fund. We are going to expand the business, we are going to grow the business by 20%. This is it's not just saying it, but it's a goal they want to achieve in a business. For them to do achieve this, if there's no fund, the management will ask, how do we get this fund? Can we get a credit facility from the bank? From our bank, the bank, we must have a bank. Then if you're a private sector, the business owner will now sponsor it. But since it's a corporate organization, the team will now discuss about how to raise money for this business we are talking about. So when they discuss about how to get this money, the finance manager or the HOD finance or the director of finance will be the person that is in charge of the forecasting. And the officer in charge of forecasting is known as the demand ma manager. He forecasts about the products, he focused about the finance funds, he focused about everything that concerns purchasing of the raw materials, he focused everything that concerns purchasing of the resources like ICTs, he focused if the system is getting old, he do all those things. The demand manager will be doing it reporting to the director of finance and they work hand in hand. And that's why we say we must have a good strategy. And that strategy talks about the goal. What is the goal of the organization? The goal has to be smart. And when the goal is smart, then you talk about carrying everybody along. And that is as smart. Align. The demand manager will align with every of the sector, business units. It's the duty of the demand manager in finance to align with the objective of the organization and align with the procurement of all the things needed by the production, all the things needed by sales and marketing, all things needed in finance, human resources. Human resources is really about recruiting the experts that we carry out, then the ICT. All these things are done by the finance department. And when they are forecasting, they ensure that the funds they are looking for be able to carry out the business operation. Business operation we're talking about is the activities of the day, daily activities that each business unit does in order to achieve the business unit targets, which is in synergy with the corporate organization's goal. These are the things we do when you talk about forecasting of the financial requirement. We move further to talk about other things. When we talk about the concept, then we talk about the strategy, the business plan. What is the business plan? Business plan is what you set to achieve a particular goal. That helps you to move forward. 
in business. You use business plan. Business plan and long term actions. When you talk about business plan, you're talking about long term actions which we are going to go are going to achieve within a long time period. So it's a roadmap for taking business particular direction. So when you talk about business plan, we are talking about the road map we are going to follow to a particular direction in that business. Then we now talk about financial plan. These are the two first things you have to look at. When you look at this, you discover that the financial plan is a critical success of business plan, especially the purpose of getting funds from the bank, getting loan or funds or equity from the investors, the shareholders. If you want to get money, you have to forecast all this. How to get funds from the shareholder or to get loan from the bank is the finance that we now strategize. How can we get loan to finance this business we want to do? We want to grow the sales by 20%. We want to expand the business. We want to do set of things. We want to procure a, a new technology for the production. We want to acquire new systems for ICT so that the tra tracking of the sales or the invoicing of the product uh, to the customers directly will be achieved efficiently. So when you are thinking of the plan, the finance people will planning how to get these things in order. Because the system we are going to get is not only for the sales people. We are going to get a system that will be tracking the accruables and receivables and payables. All the things we have to compute is involved in buying these systems we'll be forecasting. That in the next one year, in the next two years, we should be able to change the systems we have here and change the softwares so that they're able to be on track with all the business we are doing, so that things will be moving faster and fine, so that we can even assess the customer's business portfolio. So that if you know, want to give the customer a credit or a facility, or to help the customer to get a facility from the bank in order to move the business forward, you'll be able to think about it. So you do all those things in order to fast track whatever you are doing and ensure that these things are moving forward. Business are moving forward. So then when you talk about money, the financial plan has to do with the major things. You can't do a financial plan without looking at the segments. What is involved in the business as balance sheet? These sectors, you have to provide a statement which will now guide you to know the balance sheet, this income statement, and the cash flow. Because whoever is going to give you this facility we are talking about, we first of all look at your balance sheet. Is it viable? Is the business you are doing viable? Is it going to, are you going to be able to pay? Based on your balance sheet, you'll be able to track all the things you are doing. And balance sheet means you have to look at the assets, liability, and the equity that is involved. So when you are talking about the balance sheet, you have to look at this income statement. When you look at this income statement, you look at the cash flow, the inflow and outflow of the cash. How are they, are they generating sales? The sales, are they getting revenue? These are the things you have to look at when you talk about financial planning. You can't just plan without doing underground work because the person you are going to ask for fund 
we first of all look at those things. Then I also going to present a good paper that is very sweet, that is very beautiful. But you need to understand that this business I'm going to put my money into, I hope it's going to be sustainable, it's going to be viable. Are we going to be having challenges after putting my money on this things? I'm still having challenges in the business to return on investment because whoever is putting his money is looking for the return on investment. A shareholder cannot put his money and be telling you that ah, there's no business. So when you look at your balance sheet and income statement, these three things, the basic things, he will be able to convince himself that this business is going to be a viable business. The product will fly. All these things we are going to talk about, if it's service, the service is going to fly. If it's product, product is going to service, so it fly. So there's no reason for not giving you the thing. Then if the bank is going to give you a loan, they will be looking at this business we are going to sponsor. I hope you know the dates. We start looking how to sell off the business and start getting our money back. We don't want to enter into problem. He will ask you, where is their balance sheet? So the bank will ask you all those things for him to move forward and think of processing your loan. So the credit manager in the bank will definitely read your application, read all your documents, and he will ask you that you have to bring a balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow for him to convinced, be convinced that these things we are going to give you will never end up into trouble. And they will look at it that what is the interest rate? If we are giving you at this, we are going to charge you interest. And when we are preparing this balance sheet or statement and cash flows, make sure that you put a note underneath so that all the things that are not inside the balance sheet will be interpreted at the appendix. When you go to the appendix, you're able to see what those notes are so that you be able to get clear. No ambiguity in the whole thing. You ensure that you get it right and the person will be happy so that if he's willing to give you the loan, he ensure that he gives you the loan and you move on with the business operations, level to recoup the money and return the money. If it's a shareholder, the shareholder is looking at the end of the year to get a, an increment or to get a right issue. If you don't get right issue, you would like to get a dividend one, which is the return on investment for what he put for you. He's interested in getting those things. If you are giving an excuse, you're not doing a business work. So you need to be up and doing to ensure that you prepare your financial forecasting very well so that those things you need and what you acquire will be even very easy for you to get them. Then we move into what you said. Forecast, that's income. Okay, we have the balance sheet, income statement, and cash flow. These sectors should have no explanations for the reader. That's the reader is the credit manager who is in the bank. It involves future purpose for funds and previous activities of the business. So that's what it's talking about the forecast in the statements, forecast in the financial planning. When you're talking about financial planning, look at forecasting. The demand manager will be looking at these things and he will use it to present to the creditor, which is the bank or the shareholders who will bring funds for the business. Then we look at who is required to bring the funds. What, why do we need these funds requirements? Why do we require the funds? Do we require the funds to do just ceremony? No. We require these funds to provide an financing of company's acquisition. Supposing the company wants to acquire another company that is not in the same business with them, but they want to diversify by expanding, expansion. So what they need to do is to acquire. And to acquire, they need to buy up that company totally. Or if they want to merge, they want to merge with the company, or they want to 
do some other things that will help them to get money. Refinancing an existing lender's position. They can do that. They can equally purchase of assets. That is what we have already said. So for you to do all these things, the requirement, financial for requirements, a company desires to change the capital structure, which may arise from one need or combination of reasons that might include the following. Providing financing for companies' acquisition, refinancing the existing lender position, purchasing assets, funding businesses, sales growth. When you find sales growth, what do you mean? You want to increase their sales, the incremental sales that is coming from the sales and marketing has to be energized. You have to put fund into it. If they have to run a promo, if they don't need to do advertisement, they need to do everything in sales in order to have an incremental sales. You have to plug the money into the sales and finance, in sales marketing, so that they're able to carry out advertisement or radio hype, whatever they need to do to increase the sales, especially when the product is new. You need to do all those things so that the customers will be aware of the product and the incremental sales. And they're looking at it that in the forecast, by doing an advert by in a radio two or three times in a week, in Lagos, every region, in every region, and they have to do it with the language of that region so that the customers will be aware of the new product or the promo they are running on the product on the product, the incremental sales will come in. That is sales growth. And those sales growth will come in when you do the advert. And that growth is coming as a request, as a regards to the forecasting anticipation, which the demand manager has already carried out in finance. That let's sponsor these people for advertisement and equally do some promo or tell deals so that by the time they do these things, we now get an incremental sales. And this incremental sales will help us to sort out some of those things we have by settling debts and equally give the customers a, a value. The customers need value. So when you give value to the customers by providing them what they need in the market, and the shareholders will equally get value for what they have invested. So the business will be happy. Everybody will be happy in the business and it will be moving fine. So that's it. Then you have other ones like then there's fatigue situation. If a lender has a challenge, reinvesting or looking for funds from somewhere and equally turn around the business of that lender so that it will be able to move forward. The suppliers, the suppliers. You can support you can support the supplier. There's a product or raw material that you want to get, but the supplier is having some challenges. The only thing you can do, you finance or support the supplier. When you support the supplier, you're able to get those things for you and you now produce. Let me give you an example. Suppose that a supplier of truck for logistics, you want to deliver your goods, but it's having challenges in getting more new trucks. So for him to do business for you, he need more trucks. And these trucks cannot be done or be gotten with the facility. But when you write requirements and put your letter to the credit manager that this is my customer and he need a truck, with your letter supporting that uh, partner or that truck supplier, or this logistic supplier, he will be able to get some funds from bank based on your recommendations and your reputations. Demand will now acquire more vehicles, new vehicles that will deliver your goods to the customers as when due. Not that my truck has broken down at a certain point, 
and those goods will not get there on time, and some of the goods if they are perishable will be destroyed by rain or by sun or anyhow by the weather conditions. So when you are talking about supporting this your customer or supporting your logistic supplier of vehicles, you want a return to support him so that he gets a facility from the bank. The bank will now give him a facility to buy new trucks. With your reputation, you actually have not done the funding, but with your reputation and you have the, the customer will be happy to get those trucks and give you these trucks dedicated for you to deliver your truck, to deliver your products to the market as I went to. That is what we call sense of urgency. Other the competitors will be sending their products in the market. And when your truck is in a truck that is damaged along the road, and you know deliver that truck, others will sell their products. Then how do you recover the money? So you keep on complaining, complaining. So it's the duty of the finance to plan this business in such a way that everybody will be carried along. When we are carried along, that is asthmat, line, specific, measurable, tenable, relevant, and time bound. So, when the business is going like this, once in a while, you will carry your customers along so that you will be able to be involved. You carry the finance along, you carry the staffs, internal staff in, the, staff, the employees have to be carried along so that everybody will be pursuing the goal. And ensure that the target is achieved. That's it for the financing the liquidation of or wind down. In most cases, this one is not a viable one, but once in a while, if there's a business unit that you discover that that business is not going well, or the location of that business is not going to give us what we need, and there's no return on investment on that, you tend to liquidate that. Wind down that business up. So you're able to close that side, sell off the property or the assets that are involved, and put it in the fly right into the business. That is, but you have to get some funds you know, to advertise to get the estate agents or whoever that is, the professionals will help to sell off those things. That's the when we are financing a liquidation of wine something. So, what do we mean by capital source? It's part of the things we are discussing. Capital sourcing, what do you mean? Is this what you just go and do anyhow? No. Professionals have to be involved in capital sourcing. In as much as finance is doing it, the finance director or the demand manager must involve those that are good in it. You can't just dangle into it and say, because I'm in finance, go into it. So we talk about it as it involves articulating a business strategy along with the supporting of the business plan. Business plan. The business plan you have, which you have already shown to the creditor or sent to the bank or to the investors, has to come into play. When you are sourcing the funds, this thing has to involve articulating the business plan you have already, that this is what you need to do. In business operation and this business operation will give us a certain month with these things we are going to achieve this we are going to achieve that so that we are able to move forward in our business get sustainable get target achieved get computers have uh, our competitors uh, competitive advantage over our competitors and business will be moving fine so that is what is known as the capital sourcing. Capital sourcing as well as cap capital funding is the money that lenders or equity holders provide for business, daily and long term needs. So, when you talk about is the money, when you articulate it with the business plan, is the money people bring into the business on a daily basis? or in long term. So the, you think, how do we get this money? Is it generating this money from sales? Is it from the lenders? The sales may not be enough. 
Let's get lenders to assist us. Let's get the investors' equity to get involved. The shareholders will come into it. These are the things we do in order to get these things done properly. You cannot do it properly without involving the professionals. If you do it alone without the professionals, we have some challenges along the line. And that's why you will now say, what is capital structure? The capital structure we are looking at is particularly about the debt and equity used by a company to finance overall operations. Goods, overall operations and growth. Debt come from the bonds, bond issues and loans. So when you talk about all these things, look at what we get from the bond. What are we getting from the loan? This is that we are owing debts. So when you talk about the financial structure, we are looking at the debts and equity that is coming into it. The lender and the loan is collected from in a certain way. That's where you use the company to finance overall business operations and grow. The debts comes from the from the form of in form of bonds, bonds issues, and loans. Why the equity come in form of common stocks, preferred stocks, and retained earnings? Strong tenders is also considered to be part of the capital structure. When you are talking about capital structure, we are looking at equity from the common stock you sold, you sold stock, you do some re earnings and preferred stocks, all these things as equity. You flow into the business, the business will grow. The operations will be viable. The challenges you have in buying the materials will not be there. The raw material will be available, and when it's available, then you're able to produce what you want to produce at a given time, then put to the market. Source providers. The who provides all these things? There are traditional bank lenders, commercial bank, commercial finance companies, specialized estate lenders, asset bed lenders, and so many other ones. They help in these lending professions. So that if you contact the professionals, you're able to get the business going in a proper way without jumbling into it. Say, I'm in finance, I know how to do it. I want to do it alone. Can't do it alone because the business requires you to involve the professionals so that they give you the professional touch in business. And there will be ethical standards so that you don't regret going to business without having the ethical standard. These are what we are talking about, the business ethics. When you talk about the business ethics, you look at these things are they in order? Is it in compliance with the business ethics? Because somebody may have a conflict of interest if you don't do it with standard. So you have to do it with standard, ethical standard, business norms. Otherwise, somebody may run down the business or the idea which you have already targeted to get a business growth, and somebody will just do it. Let's do it in a private way, let's do it in a small way, let's do it with a a relations way. No, you must place that ethical standard, the norms in place as we are doing all this financing or sourcing for the funds so that somebody will not just go and misuse money or the funds generated or enter into the wrong hand to get the loan and start having a high interest rate because you didn't ask for the professional's advice. So that's how we go into getting into the lenders. There are so many of them, private equity source, and many of them are into the business and you get it right, professionals in particular. Then we talk about the goals, the goals and objectives. As we are looking for the funds to do the business, 
we are looking at the goals or we're looking at the objective. The goals are long-term plan. Why the objectives are the short term or the specific things we need to do to achieve a given target within a specific time? Why the goal is like a little bit long time? We are going to achieve this within a long time period. It's like a vision. So a vision and mission, we'll be thinking we are going to like, in the next two, three years, the next five years, we want to grow this business by double digits. So it's not immediate. But we must start somewhere. And where we are starting has to be an objective, it has to be specific. And when you are specific in those things, you follow up with the objective and the targets and ensure that you are following the objective and you're going to achieve the objective. So that objective is like what we are doing within a short time. In a way, we are going to achieve a double digit this year. Despite the pandemic, you are striving to it. And when you are striving to it, you ensure that all the business units are carried along. All departments are carried along. And when you're talking about being this specific, you are going to ensure that at the end of the year, you measure it. When you measure it, you ensure that it's attainable. This goal you have set is attainable. You ensure that it's relevant. It's going to help the business. It's justifiable. Without stepping on tools of other people, to ensure that they are going to achieve these things in fair and free atmosphere without having a problem of financial crisis, cash flow crisis, and so many other things. That's why you are doing these things with the ethical standards. Then when you talk about is it reasonable or justifiable, then within the time bound, within the time limit, we are going to achieve this objective within this time frame, we are going to achieve this goal. And everybody will be aligned, everybody will be carried along. Human resources ensure in providing an expert in or experienced skilled people. Why the IT will be able to provide the right software and hardware that will be able to help us to achieve these goals everybody has agreed to. The marketing and sales we're able to push this product to the market, distribute it across the range of the products, according to the distribution of the, to the, all the customers within the regions and deliver and collect the money so that the money collected will be achieved as the target set. The production will not be left out. That like the engine room, all the raw materials acquired, the right raw materials acquired will be used by the production to produce all the things needed at the appropriate time without damages involved, without leakages in its constraints. The production will ensure quality because when you get to the customers, they will look at it. Is it utilizable? Am I going to get a benefit from what you produce? If you're not going to get a benefit from it, is after selling all these things and it has damages, the damages has encroached into the money has invested in procuring a product. It's lovely. So production has a lot of things to do to ensure quality and make sure that we do some time and the product is going to be priced in such a way that the finance will price it so that the price will not be so high. So the price, the profit margin is okay for the business. So that when they produce and push to the sales and marketing, the sales and marketing will equally sell it. Why the finance will collect the money from the customers? The receiving person ensure that those money is received and achieved and make gain. And the gain made out of it will be used to pay suppliers and plow back the other day into the business. And that is return on investment, return on assets. That's what we are talking about, setting up a business objective. So when you set this business objective, you don't set it because you want to set it. According to Hadi, you say that setting objective or a vision or goal is one thing. But if you don't follow up to execute it and implement it, 
it becomes a hallucination. That is, it doesn't make sense. That is hard for you. How you quoted that thing as a statement in 2007, saying that if you be in a business and you do a casting and finish all those things, do it in such a way that you have it set a goal, a strategy of setting the goal, you set a goal for setting goals without following it up, without achieving those goals, implementing it to the right, to the bottom line. You ensure that you operate and deliver those things, follow up, implement and execute those targets and objectives that you set for the business and, and achieve it within the reasonable time. Then you are not doing a good business because your focus is just like that, a windblow. You let us focus for passing sake. No, when you are in business, you have to be in business. If you are not in business, you are not in business. You make sure that whatever you are doing in business, you are going to achieve the goal at the set time. And you are going to achieve the objective at the set time. So that if you say in the next four years, you are going to be somewhere better than this. You are going to be the competitors and you are going to have a double digit or triple digit. You follow it up in that four years that by the, before the end of that four years, you are close to it. At least 95% of it is going to be achieved before the four years. So that by four years, you are really on the business, you're on top of the game, you have gotten what we are talking about as regards to that. So we talk about objective and goals. That is why we say the type of objective and goals of the nation have in line with what we are talking about. Then when you have the goals and objectives, you look at it as asthmats. When you look at it as asthma, you say what we call P-O-L-C, not P-L-C, P-O-L-C. The goals and objectives are aligned to P-O-L-C. P for planning, O for organizing, L for L is for leading, you have to lead, then C for controlling. You ensure that all these things are properly done in such a way that you coordinate very well. That is a human resources acronym. P O L C is a human resources acronym, human resources management acronym that when you are doing a business and set a goal, the team members of the management. We look at it from a, a holistic view that this thing is really going to serve what the purpose we are looking for by goals having aligned with planning, goals having aligned with organizing, goals having aligned with the leading, goals having aligned with the controlling. And the controlling is the ball game of the finance. Whether you like it or not, the finance have the auditors, they must control, evaluate all the things the same people are doing and ensure that the business is growing. They are generating funds, they are selling, so that the revenue that is coming back will be quantified, evaluated. When they evaluate it, remove all the ones they are using to settle the debts, settle the interest of the loans from the bank, and ensure that the one that is remaining is going to pay the salary of the employees and return on investment, which at the end of the year, the shareholders are looking forward to get their dividends, return on investment, which they have given you money to do business, and they're eager to get the business, and they'll be happy to see that business moving. That is business for you. And when you are doing all those things, you look at goals and objectives are essential part of planning. They are also escalating escalating the implications for all the aspects of the organizing, leading, and controlling. Broadly speaking, the goals and objectives serve as a, a gauge and reporting performance. The way you set goals in line with all these things, that's why we say as much. When in line with all these things, it will gauge and report the performance. It will equally talk about the improvement, improved performance, managing the accountability and aligned efforts. The aligned effort is talking about 
we have to be in synergy with all the departments and all the business units. If you're into pharmaceutical and you're producing consumables like drinks, and then people producing oral health care and prohibiting beverages, they all of them are into one corporation. You can say, because you're into pharmaceutical, pharmaceutical should do, do a lot with their business. No, they're into synergy. And the finance director will be involved in all the business of the company because he oversees the pharmaceutical business requirements, the, the financial, the, the pharmaceutical business requirements, the consumer business requirements, the oral healthcare consumer business, the nutritional health drinks, all these business units has to come and the finance will be involved in all of them. Come, this is not going down. <laughs> So, as we are talking about, the finance will be involved in all the business units to ensure that everybody is aligned with the aligned efforts and there will be accountability. There will be improved performance by the sales people. That is the sales implementer. All these things have to be in place as a forecasting. As they are forecasting, they will get these things done properly. So that everybody will be carried along. Thank you.